what's going on guys, Daniel from ModBot here, and today we are looking at this guy. This is the Creality Ender 5. I know a lot of people are really interested in this machine. Uh, it's definitely been a popular machine for quite a while and grown a lot of traction uh, over the last couple months. So let's go ahead and get into what my experience has been like with this machine. <music> As always, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting my content. Stickers have officially shipped out and you should be receiving those if you have not already. The Creality Ender 5, what is this? Um, this is kind of a unique one for Creality. Uh, it's not the first version that they've done that's like this, but their machines typically are, they've done Prusa style machines like the uh, ever popular Enders or the CR10s or the CR10Ss or S-Pros. They've done cantilever design, uh, style machines like the Ender 2. And then they've got this style machine, which I don't really know what the technical term is for it, but it works similar to um, the one I could think of off the top of my head is like an Ultimaker machine where the uh, carriage of the hot end goes X and Y and the bed drops up and down. And I know there's a lot of people that seem to like this style of machine because they believe that it is more stable, which I'm not going to say as a, as a frame it's not because yes, it is supported on four corners, does have more aluminum and does feel relatively stable. Um, but I, I'll get into that. That's a completely separate topic of its own. Setup on this machine was really easy. I'd say all in all, you can have this up and running in about 20 or 30 minutes. I'm kind of going to compare a little bit of it to that of the Ender 3. Uh, just because that is typically a machine that this gets like people are on the fence between Ender 5 or Ender 3 Which one do I get the Ender 3 definitely has a little bit more of a setup than this guy This one you really just use one size screw to attach these four aluminum corner pieces and the top and bottom frame and then you attach the bed on and like the extruder over here and the filament holder. It's really really simple I did this on a random live stream and I think I think I got it up and running in like 30 minutes, give or take, and that was with me going slow and like messing around with my camera setup and all that stuff. So setup is really, really easy on this. Uh, as far as specs go, it's got really similar build volume to the Ender 3. It's 220 by 220 by 300, and I believe the Ender 3 is 220 by 220 by 250. So X and Y are gonna be the same. The height is a little bit taller. You do get a flexible build plate on here, which Somehow, some way, mine has not gotten destroyed yet. I'm not a huge, like, I love flex plate systems. I'm not a huge fan of these, like, kind of cheaper ones that have been coming on printers because I feel like they don't last very long normally. But this one, somehow, some way, is held up really well. There's very, like, there's no bubbling of the adhesive, and it, it seems like it's still got a lot of life left in it. Um, so that's pretty cool. The, the X, uh, or the, the whole, Hot end setup is gonna be the same as the Ender. I did hear that this has an MK10 hot end setup while the Ender 3 has an MK8 and they're saying supposedly that will help to alleviate some clogging issues, which is not something I've really had on my uh, Ender 3, but that's a difference. Um, supposedly also there is a meanwhile power supply in here, which if that's the case, that's rad. I have not taken this apart yet because it's closed, completely enclosed, which is really nice, um, but I have not checked that myself. So uh, but that, that is something that they claim. Uh, also, there is thermal runway protection by default on this. From what I read, Creality is saying that it should be on all of their latest Ender 3, Ender 3 Pros, and Ender 5 machines. Uh, definitely something you want to have on your printer uh, for safety, uh, no doubt. The one thing that I was kind of intrigued with was the ability to enclose this machine easier since it's already got the frame but realistically with all the things kind of protruding on it it wouldn't be very much easier to enclose this than just like an ender 3 so i'm kind of throwing that argument out like i don't think that this is really easier to enclose um regarding the frame being more stable i mean i don't have engineering data to back it up but it definitely feels again like more of a solid machine just because it's supported on all four corners. However, there is one thing that I've seen a lot of people talk about with this machine, and that is that the bed isn't exactly the most stable. Um, this isn't really a fair representation, me grabbing it, moving it, because since the motors are off, it is easy to slide it up and down. But regardless, this whole bed is only supported on one side over here. So it's not supported um, on the other side, like this whole side is hanging off. So as it prints, it, it does get a bit um, more wobbly, which it's actually fine. I didn't notice any like artifacts or Z wobble in the prints that I did on this machine, 
But if you were to throw on a heavier bed like glass instead, I think that that would potentially cause that to uh, be more of an issue. Um, but there is a really awesome simple upgrade on Thingiverse, which I'm going to be printing out, which basically just adds an extra um, layer of thickness in a sense. It's like a bracket that clamps onto the front and it's supported by these uh, smooth rods over here. So I'll probably do a follow-up video where I show that, but that's kind of one thing that I think you should probably do with this machine is upgrade that um, the bed so that way it's a bit more stable. But uh, all in all, the prints on this machine turned out really nice. Uh, I would say that they were definitely on par with that of the Ender 3, uh, which is really to be expected since the you know, the um, extruder and the hot end setup are pretty identical. I tested out quite a bit of PLA. I, so I initially ran the uh, test print that came on the micro SD card, which was this tiny little piggy bank. It really was not very flattering. I don't think that would have been my choice for a test print. Um, I then went ahead and hopped over to my computer and I downloaded uh, Cura 4.2, which now has the Cree Awesome mod built into it natively, which is super cool. Uh, I loaded the Ender 5 profile and I was off and printing and that is what I used for the remainder of my prints was Cura with the Cree Awesome mod. Definitely recommend getting that uh, for any Creality machine that you have, but it did a really great job. I printed out a, after the piggy bank thing, I went ahead and did a green like castle with stairs uh, that turned out awesome. I then found some like metallic PLA on Amazon that I went ahead and did a print um, from the fifth element uh, from CMAG. It's this really awesome model that I've been wanting to print forever. And it did have quite a bit of stringiness to it, which I think was really the filament. I think I got it for $10 on Amazon. So it was cheap filament, but I still think it did a phenomenal job. The print turned out insane, um, followed by a vase. Uh, I did a couple other PLA prints as well. I did a massive 24 plus ish hour desk organizer uh, PLA print, which it turned out so nice. It is insane. And I also even tried a little bit of PTG, which if you're gonna do a lot of PTG, I'd recommend upgrading the hot end. I think that you can definitely melt this PTFE aligned uh, hot end, but I did do a print um, of this I can't think of what the cat's called, but it, it turned out really good regardless. I was really impressed with that. It did a phenomenal job with PTG. There was a little bit of stringing, which I did clean up with, I uh, actually took a lighter to it to burn it off. But all in all, the machine's been rad. Do I think, do I think that it's necessarily better than the Ender 3, which I love my Ender 3. Um, I don't really. Um, the Ender 3 you can get from like somewhere around the $200 price tag. So maybe it's a little bit more, a little bit less, but that's roughly where it's at. Well, this guy's, you know, 300, a little over 300 roughly is what it goes for. And personally, like if it were me, I love my Ender 3, but I know that there is, there is quite a lot of people that uh, are pretty sold on the idea uh, that they like this kind of gantry system more so than the Prusa design. Um, and so, yeah, if, if that's, if that's the type of machine you want to go with, then this is definitely a viable option. Uh, again, the only real downsides I've seen to it are the bed being a little bit wobbly. And then initially when I was printing the uh, desk organizer that I printed out, the large PLA print, when the hot end would go to the far corner, this PTFE tube was getting caught around this like motor housing up here and it would go like clunk, 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 because it wasn't able to go the distance it needed to go. So um, it happened a couple times. What I ended up doing was removing the zip ties that were um, on connecting the PTFE to this um, hot end, you know, wire harness. So once I did that, I had no issues. Uh, I'm probably gonna be cleaning up the wires a bit more on here, but that was one one thing I ran into that I thought was kind of strange. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really it. Overall, definitely a really solid machine. I'm probably gonna be doing some amount of upgrades to it. I don't know exactly to what extent, but I will certainly share with you guys uh, updates as I do like the stability stuff and any kind of other upgrades that I think that I wanna do to this machine. So. Uh, anyways, this is the long-awaited Ender 5 review, which again, I think is a really solid machine and it's nice that uh, Creality has a pretty good array of machines in their lineup right now, depending on what it is you're looking for and uh, you know what your needs are. So on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below. Uh, if there's anything I didn't answer that you were curious about, um, I'm sure 
I'm sure there's something on the technical side. Let me know in the comments down below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome videos. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot and I am out. Peace guys.